I don't know how many of you have been at the receiving end of an investigation. Typically what will happen is he wants information from a company. He will catch the first guy he finds inside and he'll say, come sit with me in the police station. Nothing else. Come sit with me in the police station and you are going to sit here till somebody from your company is going to, who knows something about it is going to come and talk to me. So it's not about technology. It happens in, I was at, this happened to me at, when I was at India Mart. <coughs> One guy just, you know, he was leaving for home. They just picked him up. So, uh, you know, you can say quotes and things like that, but at that point of time, you need to cooperate. And, and that's, that's the only way forward. I think around the world, the consumer has voted with his feet, which is why already large swathes of everything that happens on your phone uh, is entirely encrypted end to end, whether you're using WhatsApp or Telegram or HTTPS or any transaction. And there is no scope for uh, deep packet inspection in those cases. I mean, that's where the trend is. That's where consumers are going. I don't think governments are going to be able to stop that. That's my little very biased take, but uh, Shivku, maybe you have a different point of view. No, I suppose uh, as long as the underlying uh, data networks are uh, already being licensed and uh, you know, I think uh, lawful interception is already possible on those networks, uh, I think it must be possible for the government to uh, be able to uh, trace these calls. So I why just don't... It's not metadata, it's data. Yeah, no. So I'll give you an example. There was a conference that I was at where someone from the Delhi police was speaking and they were talking about the attacks in Mumbai and how uh, they were unable to trace the source of the calls uh, at that point in time. What was happening was someone in one country uh, created a bank account in another country, used that bank account to make a payment for a VOIP number in another country, you, uh, and then took uh, or, or, or an account in an, another country and then bought uh, data for making calls. So they were not able to trace the source back quickly enough while it was going on. Now, now I'm not someone who says I take, uh, you know, use an exception to make a rule or look at an extreme situation and make a rule for that. But the challenge is legitimate if you think about it, right? How, how, would, how should they deal with it? And I'm, st I'm still trying to find an answer to that question. The challenge is already there. You have Skype, WhatsApp, and all other tools, right? So why restrict this? I mean, this is not going to make it any worse or better. So yes, somebody needs to work out a solution for that. But that doesn't mean that stop the current way of doing things. I mean, no, st even stop. Today, yeah. As of today, and I think Rajesh will know this, this better than me, there are still discussions going on encryption yeah. uh, behind the scenes. Yeah. Nikhil, I must correct you. The Bombay issue was tracked. And yes, the yes I, I, I am aware of it. It was tracked. But it was the fact was that the difference is that it was not tracked uh, in time. Huh. And it that, was that, was, that, was, that had nothing to do with the technology. It, exactly. had, it had to do with it our capabilities during. because exactly. it was one of, the, one of the first cases in which this, this technology was Nikhil, used and how it was we used. We are staying still, I, as per our license term, we are still staying in 40-bit encryption. Exactly. While all the payment websites are 128 and 256 and even more the DOT themselves are using 512 bit when they are doing the auction of spectrum. So this is a pathetic thing what is happening right now ki that our licensor is using 512 bits and they are forcing us for 40 bit because they don't have the capability of more than that and they are requesting Blackberry or blah blah uh, application provider to give us the encrypted key. Uh, just to add it's to that, this, India is, this India is a very funny thing. Yeah, uh, I don't know if you recently uh, read about the Hillary Clinton situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I did. Where, where uh, after they found out that, that Edward Snowden recommends Signal, her entire team moved to Signal, even though they had themselves been arguing on security issues. Okay. One, uh, what, what I will say that the VOIP call or the internet telephony call is the most secured. You can check the origination, to, you can check the termination. You c will not be able to Contest. content, reason the uh, proprietary encryption. And in that case, the law enforcement agency has to become smart because this is the same terrorism issue is into the other part of the world also, but they are have opened all this internet telephony and they are doing their law, in, uh, law monitoring of their own. They are right. not forcing ISPs or telcos to give a circuit so that I will monitor you. If I don't want that my circuit to be monitored, what I will do? I will remove the cable. 
Also at this point, I think it's uh, important to point out that the government demands out here seem very legitimate, but the truth of the matter is if you see what NSA was doing along with GCHQ in the UK, the NSA by law is not allowed to spy on Americans, the GCHQ by law is not allowed to spy on Brits. So uh, the NSA spied on Brits and gave them the information they wanted and asked the Brits to spy on Americans and give them the information they wanted. But Mahesh, they are doing? No, no. <laughs> all of this was happening till, for example, all the Google trails, and, you know, were not encrypted end to end. But a large part of that went dark last year, two years ago, when Google said, I'm shutting it down, I'm not allowing you access, right? So, of course, the point is it was not, they were, they were asking, while they were, had legal right, they actually overstepped legal authority, went extrajudicial. I'm very happy they got slapped. All right, and that's fine. Now let them deal with it. If, so, if they can't break, you know, if they can break 40, let's go to 128. Yeah, but... Uh, if I may just add, Mahesh... Mahesh no, but as far as I know, as far as I know, uh, all the major carriers in the U.S. had provided uh, uh, clone feeds to, uh, to, NSA, to NSA, which was feeding directly into their data center from, which is legal. But, no, no, but, but, but it is, it is completely legal in most uh, states to encrypt your private conversation so that nobody has any access. So the, the, there is no, so then it is up to the NSA to have their decryption uh, sort of uh, technologies to decrypt those, that content. Yeah, the, the same kind of uh, cloning of uh, data flowing through telcos is now actually used for big data analytics. It's the same, the same functions, the same nodes are copying data for business use, which were being used for security agencies earlier. And this uh, debate about encryption and privacy is not going to be solved by technology. It's going to be solved by our codes, right? The codes will have to say that any data collected illegally, any data which is collected illegally is going to be thrown out and not cannot be used against you. You know, I, I think Mr. Charya made a very important point, which is uh, on the capabilities of law enforcement uh, agencies around the world and, and in India. And here I'm speaking purely personally. But I think that when one lets the security debate dominate, one risk that we end up running is that uh, we, uh, we allow uh, law enforcement agencies to also kind of not upgrade their capabilities. If, if, the, if the reason why people are asking, the government is asking for, capabil for encryption, for example, to be restricted at a very low level, which in some cases actually compromises security. And, you know, similarly, uh, perhaps tries to stop the deployment of new technologies. Uh, the, re the reason is that that way, uh, in, you know, monitoring and uh, interception is possible without upgrading capabilities, without making that investment and without making that effort. And th that will obviously cause problems. And, and that's something that is definitely not an ideal situation. Uh, on, uh, on your point, I think that, uh, I agree with you that it, it is a legal question. Just a technical point, and here again I'm speaking personally, I think that some of these questions should ideally be decided by parliament. It should be the subject of laws as opposed to judges deciding because uh, they, they should be making law. You will always be able to, because the way encryption works, it is always going to be easier to encrypt something than to decrypt something. So, uh, and the only tool which the governments have against the citizens is to outlaw encryption, is to say you can, can't use more than 40 bits, right? So a lot of us are actually breaking the law by using a lot of apps that we do right now. And How are we? Yeah, you need WhatsApp. a prior uh, WhatsApp, WhatsApp. Yeah, yeah. So, so I just I just wanted to sort of highlight it, though this that that restriction has now been removed. So if anybody has seen the latest uh, unified license, so that condition has been removed. But earlier, if you were using 256 bit encryption or anything beyond uh, you know 40 bit, you had to seek prior approval of the DOT. Even and in the even in the US, uh, going back, a couple you have also to provide the keys, and it was something really very strange. And I dealt with this. You know, they actually did not know how to use the keys. They they just took the keys on a CD. And those, those keys were never utilized. <laughs> Can they, you imagine that? <laughs> they are even saying okay, that what is this key and where have we have to Exactly. Keep? We don't want to take the responsibility. Uh, so there was a point in the in US history where uh, encryption was treated as munitions. Uh, 
So to to you couldn't you couldn't export encryption technology without even an arms today, license. Even today, even today, even under the Vasana Agreement today, the uh, the yeah, export control. Yeah, on the encryption point, see, I think we try and treat the technology world differently from what happens in the real world. The fact is this: if there is something encrypted that I write down on a piece of paper, the state cannot compel me to decrypt it. I if I post it or send it over DHL or a courier service. they cannot compel that person to say that you will only carry it if you have the ability to decrypt it uh, you know and i think we have to be able to bring the entire conversation into real world uh, analogies which are there that exist today and argue back and create a narrative out of that you know no i said i just want to add some information over here the pgp encryption after all the student files very clear was not broken strong pgp encryption holds even nsa couldn't break it nsa breaks it differently it breaks it by getting into your computer getting into somebody else's computer and so on it doesn't really directly break the encryption that route is not the one they're trying now of course if quantum computing comes in yes that my route might become attractive again us there let's let's be very clear us is doing everything it wants and nobody is able to stop it as yet what is what is no no question is that the let's not discuss us law the question is us has access to every damn thing under some loophole or the other and i do not i don't want to get into this debate because that will be a very long debate i just i want to highlight two i think practical issues that vip players might face in light of current regulation right and maybe what we should do about it so the two issues one is recording of real time information and storage of historical data now the fact is that under current under the it act and the regulations under that there the law enforcement agencies are empowered to direct vip providers to to facilitate all types end to end cooperation in providing access to information and the kinds of requests that we've seen come to these communication providers are time bound and without prior notice so tomorrow they could issue a request saying we need you to start monitoring communications from x date to x date now the fact is if you don't have prior notice you have to have installed these uh, technical facilities to be able to do it Hist historically right so you need to have incorporated the bill i have a counterpoint so there was recently a case of uh, this girl from hyderabad who went uh, got lost somewhere and it was found in goa and i was personally involved with that case because it was a friend's uh, niece who i was trying to track actually through my friends in cyber crime the truth is that you can send a notice to google and facebook but you cannot compel them under any circumstance to react within the time frame that you want so they reacted but a long time later and in fact she was found using something else altogether so you send a notice to google these days and it's very different from the way it was 6 months ago <coughs> or even even facebook these days uh they can take their own sweet time so okay. they will respond sure. but you can't they can't be compelled to respond in your time frame the point i just like to highlight with google and facebook is that they are global service providers and there are certain diplomatic channels differences in how law enforcement agencies approach those entities but for any operations in india with business operations in india with a physical presence in india there is a possibility of disruption of business and that is something that we should so, start so, considering so, also so google and facebook both, both have permanent uh, establishments in india even then the actual route is for you know in that case telangana police to write to you know police in delhi who have to write to interpol who have to go through a particular channel to hit uh, you know federal you know the federal government of the us who then routes it to the local police in that jurisdiction who then so it's a one week process each way to get this so the the time bound compelling is is difficult even if it's a request sure. i'm just i'm just trying to highlight there is a danger there so with real time monitoring there is definitely a concern and also i think more particularly the idea that uh, with where there is a regulatory power to require historical data right so then we have to start thinking about so just there is an it act uh, provision which allows law enforcement agencies to re require providers to record data the word record is used so if there is a request that, sorry in some cases in some cases i am given to understand that they're supposed to record calls as well sure That's but sure so so these these flow from the interception and monitoring uh, regulations but the fact is if they are uh, if there is a request that asks you to record communications from a particular point in time is that technically feasible should we be doing it what about the privacy implications of that these are just the questions that i think uh, we no, should start like thinking about uh, sorry if uh, you even if somebody asks you to record you can completely record a conversation but it's encrypted you can't get anything out of it 
So you can record it entirely. <laughs> but it's unreadable. So all of these flow with a concomitant obligation to decrypt, right? They're all related obligations. So it's, it's impossible is unfortunately not a good enough reason, uh, response in... The I reality is that the police will come in and try and squeeze and do all sorts of things. So it's a question of can we create an environment in which people can undertake businesses where they don't feel threatened. So the reality on compulsion of global service providers or people in India, the difference is that they'll make you sweat uh, and go through a tough time to be able to do it. Yes, I do believe that there has to be a process by which uh, you, the cooperation does occur. But I think for everyone in the room to be able to undertake a business in this is the risks or the grey areas so large that it's actually stifling innovation here. And can we actually develop structures and processes and standard operating procedures where if I am a young person setting up a company, I don't have to feel scared that the cops will come and knock on my door and will use something else to threaten me uh, to behave in the way that they want me to behave. That's, I, I think that's what we need to answer. So, so I'm saying let's not forget that Snowden service provider had to shut down his business precisely because of what he's saying. So this is a risk you carry in any, loca in any uh, domain. Yeah, yeah with, with the way internet works, I think the consumer expectation should be that your metadata or where packets are going or who you're talking to is always going to be visible. And what you are saying is <laughs> up to you to encrypt. It's end-to-end -end encrypt. But you can't encrypt how the packets flow or who you're sending a message. And I don't think that is ever going to be hidden. Like who you spoke to, that is going to be very hard unless you do a broadcast and only. That's very difficult, right? So your expectation should be? It's that, point to point. Yeah, it's point to point. So you, everyone knows who you're talking to and who is talking back to you, but they don't know what you're talking about. That should be the expectation. And that is the, that is also, I don't think the government should expect anything more than that. So the question if is you, how do if we? You use, if you use a Tor technology, you can even hide that. With, with, <laughs> with Tor, you can hide that. Right? <laughs> Black it. Yeah, so Tor uses, a num you need a number of users using the Tor exit node, right? So, so just, just give, I didn't say it loudly. Somebody. <laughs> <laughs> That's why it's very, very sort of yeah. You see, the bad guys will always be able to do it. It's the good guys like you and me who are going to face the problem. <laughs> <laughs> Bad guys will don't know how to get around. I think when, when I'm when I'm encrypting a message, I always assume that someone is is always going to be able to record who I send this message to, even if I I encrypt it. Not everyone is that paranoid or aware. Is the is the challenge is the challenge that we face. But I don't know if you noticed uh, in a statement to Reuters mm -hmm. day before yesterday, uh, Reliance uh, an unnamed Reliance Geo person said that.